Hello and welcome back to Good Time Hunting. If you have been to my channel before, then you will probably know me well for running and hiking in barefoot shoes, but that is not what I am best known for. What I am best known for is this, weightlifting, exactly what I've made my career out of. And the question that we're gonna be answering today is why do I weightlift in barefoot shoes. Now the first thing to point out is there are lots of different types, styles and brands of barefoot shoes. There are ones like these, the Vivo Barefoot Deacon, that are well suited to hybrid style training, to hiking, to running, to a little bit of everything, whatever you throw at them. We're not going to talk about those. We've also got shoes like this, the Vivo Barefoot uh, Forest ESCs, which are a fantastic, fantastic hiking shoe with thick lugs, a flexible sole, and ankle support. You don't want to weightlift in those either. What we're going to talk about today is this shoe, the Vivo Barefoot Primus Light 2. The reason for that, the reason we're going to use this as the example, is because it is just about the most flexible, the least supportive, the flattest sold, minimal cushion, barefoot shoe on the market, and I love weightlifting in these. The question that we're gonna answer is why do you do it at all? Why should you think about doing it? But also how? How do you get into it? What can you expect? How do you put the wheels in motion to go from lifting as you are now to lifting in shoes like these? And the shoe that I'm gonna be using throughout this comparison is this, the Nike Zoom X the absolute forefront of the Nike running fleet that is renowned for absolute stiffness and speed. So the first absolute must for weightlifting is a really nice big contact patch. The bigger the contact patch, the more surface area we have with the foot and the floor, the more stable our lifts are going to be. And we can directly examine this by looking at the insoles from both shoes. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that the Vivo has a much, much wider body. But if we were to then go ahead and put my feet on in my nice white socks, you can see that I have a really good coverage with the Vivo. My feet have the opportunity to splay out without losing out too much when it comes to my feet being pinched together. However, if we were to then compare that with the Nike, this nice wide foot position, this lovely surface area is going to have to get scrunched into position in order to fit inside that Nike. And even then, I have a bulbous little toe, so my foot's really gonna be getting squeezed into position in this Nike shoe. Where we're really gonna see the most benefit for weightlifting, where surface area is king, is having that nice wide toe box, which is what you get in a barefoot shoe and is what you lack in a traditional running shoe. The second point that we need to address is one of feedback. Now, when it comes to feedback, we don't just have the insoles to think about and the thickness of those insoles, we actually have the shoe themselves. And if we were to turn these shoes onto their side, it doesn't take much to figure out that the amount of cushioning that's involved, the amount of feedback that we're gonna receive from the ground is gonna be significantly higher in these Vivo Barefoots that are so pliable, you can literally squish them into the ball. Unlike these Nikes, which have got a huge amount of cushioning, they've got a massive amount, they've got bubbles in the front, they've got these absolute wedges of heels at the back, which could add at least, I don't know, an inch, inch and a half to your height. So if you're a short king, this could be a really good shoe for you. But when it comes to weightlifting, having as little cushioning as possible, having as little interruption between the floor and your foot, so you can feel every little slip and balance, every change in direction, everything possible is always going to mean that you come out on top as opposed to a weightlifter that is lifting in these big clog of a shoe. The last question is one of stability. How well, whilst you're actually performing a movement like a squat, a deadlift, a power clean, a clean, any of those big movements that aren't machine based, how well can you stabilize? How well can you feel what the ground is telling you as you're sitting down into that movement, standing up out of it? Those are incredibly important things. The sooner you learn, or the sooner you uh, know or identify that you're off balance, off kilter, your body's in the wrong position, the sooner you can adapt, the sooner you can overcome that, make a shift, move the hips over to one side, correct whatever it is that's wrong, and the higher your chances of completing a lift. If we take a look at this demonstration right here, we can see that in shoes that are heavily cushioned, 
with lots and lots and lots of support um, because they're designed for forward movement, because they're designed to have lots of cushioning, that takes away from the stability. It becomes almost impossible to immediately stick and find balance. It becomes almost impossible to really know where your body is in space. You lose out on that proprioception. But when we take that cushioning and support away and actually start using something that is more minimal, you find all of a sudden you can stick. You make any small changes that you need to because you're getting that immediate feedback from your feet and then you're stuck, right? Your body just knows exactly where it is. You've got great grip on the ground. That's the circumstance. That's where you're most likely to achieve that big lift, that lifetime PB, you know, your new one RM on a squat, deadlift, power clean, whatever. The more feedback you have, the more stability you have, the better you are going to perform. So we've established the why, now we need to establish the how. The first big issue that people tend to come up um, against when they first start getting into barefoot lifting is actually ankle mobility. When you take away the cushioning, when you take away that heel of a shoe that you're used to, all of a sudden there is a much, much greater need to be able to get your knee out in front of your toe. When your heel is elevated, you sort of mechanically cheat your way away from that position. As soon as you have to keep that heel in contact with the floor, people will tend to find that their ankle mobility restricts them to this sort of range of motion here, which isn't enough to sit into that deep squat position that we look for. What you can do about that is spend some time actually performing ankle mobility exercises, like what I'm doing right now. Putting your forearm onto your femur and then driving that knee out and in front of the toe, moving it around a little bit, before you start your lifts. This is going to be essential to making sure that you can achieve the ankle mobility required to really sit down into a deep squat position. Because without this, you haven't really got your foundation of weightlifting. Other than that though, the most important thing is individual experimentation. You're not gonna know if lifting in barefoot shoes is right for you until you actually try it. And of course, even though we've taken a look at surface area, um, feedback, stability, personal preference still plays a part. You might try it and just find that you actually don't like it. However, I definitely do recommend that you try it because the pros far outweigh the cons. When it comes to shoes to get you started, these, the Primus Light 2 from Vivo Barefoot, they're fantastic starting points. They are about as close to barefoot shoes as you can get. They've got next to nothing in them. I've actually had these ones for about three years now and they're still going strong. If you're thinking about barefoot running as well, I would advise you very, very strongly to avoid doing that until you have a decent amount of barefoot training under your belt. It is important to know and understand your body's limitations. And for most people, if you've spent a lot of time in these sorts of shoes right here, with a massive amount of cushioning support um, that does a lot of the work for you, transitioning straight into barefoot and thinking that you're gonna be able to go out and do a 10K, 15K, whatever it is that you're used to, is just unrealistic. But when you go into the gym, when you start using barefoot shoes in that controlled environment, it gives you time to start learning and understanding how your body's movement patterns have got to change in order to be able to complete the workout effectively. When you have that knowledge, when you have that understanding, Go out, get some barefoot walking in. When you have that unlock, then start gently building up to the run. A future video that I'm gonna do is a bit more detailed on how exactly to bulletproof your body for barefoot training. If you want to watch that video, make sure you let me know down in the comment section below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you send me a like as well. And if you want to, hit that subscribe. It always helps a brother out when you do that. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. If there's any other videos that you'd like me to make, then please just shout. But apart from that, thank you again for watching Good Time Hunting. Look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon.